It's a call that's telling me I'm here to serve It's a need to make a difference in the world 24 hours day or night These healing hands will make it right Looking in their eyes I know that I'm changing lives Changing lives Changing lives For the better For the better Changing lives And hi again everyone, Jim Knox along with Candace Kruger and welcome back to another edition of the Best Docs Network which of course features some of the best doctors in the entire Dallas-Fort Worth area helping change people's lives. Speaking of doctors helping change people's lives, Candace, we'll start with one who's one of the best plastic surgeons in the DFW area. He certainly is, Jim. It's Dr. Bruce Herman. He's going to talk to us about breast reconstruction. I found a small lump on my left breast after I had my third boy. So I went in, had it checked out, didn't think anything big about it. After sonogram, mammogram, biopsies, it came up cancerous. So I found an oncologist and they did chemo and then set me up with a surgeon for a double mastectomy. The surgeon introduced me to Dr. Herman. I went to see him and we started working out our issues on what we were going to do. When a patient has to have a mastectomy for breast cancer, oftentimes the surgeons that are doing the mastectomies will work together with a plastic surgeon to go straight from the mastectomy into a reconstruction in the same operation. So we oftentimes see the patient before they've ever been operated on, which is great. I think breast reconstruction works best when it's a, a team approach. After the, the mastectomy, he came in and put spacers in and filled them with saline to kind of stretch the skin before they put the implants in. And when I came out, I had boobs. I came out, you know, with more than what I had expected. I thought it was, would be flat. When you hear mastectomy and reconstruction, you don't feel like you'll come out with anything, but I did, and I knew, right then, I knew I was on the right track. Rachel is a great example of breast reconstruction. She is a young woman who unfortunately received a diagnosis of breast cancer at what I consider a very young age. Uh, we found a reconstruction method that fit her particular diagnosis and treatment plan the best. We did her operation for reconstruction the same day she had a mastectomy. Her reconstruction went very well, and now she has her breast back. Today, I am feeling wonderful. I think I'm pushing myself more that I'm able to do anything I want to do. I feel beautiful and happy and thankful, and thankful that he was my doctor. I feel like a new woman, a new Rachel. My hands would go numb and it would keep me awake at night. It didn't bother me that much during the day, although I knew I had lost a lot of strength in my hands. And then it got to the point where it went up to my elbows and my shoulders gradually. I had tests done and I had a degenerative disc. Cervical discs are one of the most common kinds of problems that we have in medicine. And several hundred thousand neck fusions are done every year. Many people have what we call cervicalgia, which is neck pain associated with it. And sometimes they have what we call cervical radicular pain, or pain that radiates into their arm. Sometimes this is associated with weakness or numbness. Like when your hands, your feet fall asleep and you try to stand up, that's how my hands felt. It started going up to my shoulders on both arms. That's when we went to see Dr. Stachniak. Dr. Stachniak recommended a certain type of surgery. They put a titanium artificial disc between six and seven. 
The interesting thing about the artificial cervical discs is it's provided us with a new potential option for dealing with this particular problem. This is what the artificial disc looks like. It's made in a construct of what we call a ball and trough as opposed to a ball and socket. Once they come together, it not only allows for flexion and an extension, but it allows for some translation too, where it glides back and forth. When we fuse these areas after we take discs out, we change the mechanics of the neck. And this unfortunately causes those areas to wear out more rapidly than they would have in the past. Artificial discs, we hope now are gonna change those statistics so that after we decompress the spine and the spinal cord and the nerves, we can have normal function. Well, I have no more symptoms whatsoever, and the surgery went very, very well, and no stitches, no pain, and I was able to sleep at night. Oh, it was wonderful. She's amazing. As always, for more information on any of the amazing doctors you've seen on today's show, just visit our website. It's bestdocsnetwork.com. Now let's check in with our next best doctor. It's Dr. Caesar Duclair, pain management specialist. My experience has been a 12-year journey. I've had 13 ESIs, which are epidural steroid injections. I've had an L5-S1 disc replacement, and um, it just never seemed to help with the pain that was radiating down my left leg. It even caused where I would trip and fall. I had a lot of problems with helping out with my kids, lifting my kids, being, being a mom. It was decreasing her ability to work, decreasing her ability to socialize with friends and family, she had started to uh, not be able to do the mundane uh, tasks of life. Dr. Duclair had asked me, well, what do you think about this device? And he kind of shows it to me. I said, well, what is that? A lot of patients uh, will qualify for a device, what we call a spinal cord stimulator. And that is an electrical device that is implanted in the uh, spinal canal next to the nerve roots that are causing their pain. And that is a great way for patients who have had surgery and are dissatisfied or they've had injections and medications and they're still dissatisfied. Uh, those patients can get uh, really great relief and they can uh, ultimately decrease their pain for uh, a long period of time on, on the order of years and then decrease their office visits with their doctor. Uh, and become very, very satisfied and very happy with that. I have a little remote control device. I can turn it up, I can turn it down. I like the fact that I'm in control of it. I have pain freedom now because of the device. Amy did really, really well. Uh, she has total pain freedom. Uh, she does not see me anymore in the office because she does not need to. She's not taking any medications. Uh, she essentially has no more complaints of back or leg pain. I'm just very blessed, very, very blessed that he's in my life because without him, I don't know that I would have the pain freedom that I have today. So I believe that God puts people in your life for a reason. Atopic dermatitis often sort of synonymously referred to as, as eczema, even though a lot of people think eczema can be other things than atopic dermatitis. Most patients and lay people think of it as the same disease. Just sort of think of it as your skin is just too sensitive to the everyday things in the world that most normal people can tolerate without any problem. For example, when the air gets really dry, a lot of patients that have atopic dermatitis will start to break out, their skin will get itchy, they start scratching, then they get more of a rash. And in fact, a lot of people that actually refer to atopic dermatitis as the itch that rashes. People itch 
first and they start scratching their skin gets irritated they get this red oozing and then they end up getting secondary bacterial infections with staph and other things like that that really makes it get much worse if someone's got atopic dermatitis or eczema for example they need to be treated with something to prevent it from getting worse and some of the things we use are things like moisturizers and emollients uh, we want to try to, if there's any secondary bacterial infections, driving condition, we want to get rid of those by using antibacterial washes. Bleach washes are very good for that, and we now have the clean body wash that works very well because that can be used both in the bath as well as in the shower. You'll also need to use antibiotics, sometimes hopefully topical, but in some cases it may have to be oral antibiotics. And then even other ancillary things we use are ultraviolet-like treatments antihistamines, topical anti-itch preparations, even in some cases anti-rejection drugs like cyclosporin have to be used in really bad cases. Most cases do begin in childhood, but there are some cases rarely that actually begin in adulthood. The good news about atopic dermatitis is that if you develop as a child, there's a fair chance that as you get into your teenage years and a little older that you'll outgrow it. You may still have a tendency to have some allergies and hay fever and that sort of thing throughout your life. But in a lot of cases, the atopic dermatitis gets much better in the teenage years and, and in the 20s. It is also not contagious. It's not something you can spread the disease from one person to another. Now, one of the problem is, though, if a child is contaminated and, and carrying staph, that can be spread within households. It's very important that if a child is infected, that they're taken care of and you try to limit that so that the parents don't get it or the other siblings don't get it, because that can be a problem. On a day-to-day -day basis, I was experiencing chronic pain, a chronic migraine, all day, 24-7. I'd wake up with one, I'd go to bed with one, and it would never go away. I tried everything from acupuncture, a chiropractor, I nerve blocks, spinal tap, and there was no relief with anything. When Jennifer first came in, she was 17 years old, had been totally debilitated by her headaches, had been basically housebound, was homeschooled, hadn't been able to do all the normal stuff that teenage girls do during high school, uh, just because of her chronic daily pain. And so we taught, decided she was a good candidate for the trial, and then when we did the trial, when she came back several days later, she'd been almost essentially pain-free from the time we put the trial in to when she came in to take the trial out. The five years I experienced chronic pain migraines, I, you know, was completely limited. I couldn't do anything. Stuck at home, dark bedroom, cold room, the typical, I've got a migraine, don't talk to me, irritability, everything. We've been using stimulators for chronic back pain for 30 years or so. And Dr. Reed decided one day to somebody with headaches to try putting a stimulator over the peripheral nerves that supply the, around that scalp and the patient had really good relief and that's how it all kind of got started. Now to have a procedure that gives people either complete relief or 80, 90 percent relief, that was real dramatic and that was, you know, just the stories you get back from patients was what makes it worthwhile. I can, I can do anything, I feel like I can experience anything, I, my pain isn't holding me back. I'm, you know, going to school, experiencing life to the fullest as where I wasn't before. The neurostimulator completely gave me my life back. I, my life has completely changed. I've done a 180 and I feel that I can experience anything because I'm pain free. As always, for more information on any of the amazing doctors you've seen on today's show, please visit our website. It's bestdocsnetwork.com. That is the place to go. Right now, the place to go is our next doctor. That is Dr. Patrick Walsh, Mohs Surgeon. Mohs Surgery is a surgical technique for the removal of skin cancer that enables us to examine all of the surgical margins of the tissue that we're removed so that we're sure that we've gotten all of the skin cancer. It has the highest cure rates of any technique of treating skin cancer and enables us to preserve as much normal tissue as possible while still removing all of the skin cancer. 
The technique is very much like the biopsy in that everything is done in the office. We just use a little local anesthetic, numb the area up, and remove the area that we can see. The way in which it differs from the biopsy is that we take the tissue that we excise and prepare it in our lab. We make our own slides, and I examine the slides under a microscope to determine if we've gotten all of the skin cancer. If we have, we stop there. If we haven't, we know precisely where any residual skin cancer is. We go back just to that area, remove a little bit more tissue, make some more slides, and keep repeating that process until we're sure we've gotten all of the cancer. If the skin cancer is very small and very superficial, the wound that results from the surgery that we do may be very similar to the wound they had after the biopsy. Very often it will heal satisfactorily on its own with good routine wound care. However, if the skin cancer has invaded more deeply or is wider than what it appears to be on initial exam, then we may recommend a repair of some sort and they range all the way from simple side-to-side -side closure to a skin flap or a skin graft. And as with all cancer, early detection and treatment is the best way to cure skin cancer. How do you know if you have carpal tunnel syndrome? The carpal tunnel is a little tunnel that a nerve goes through in your wrist. And people who have carpal tunnel syndrome will generally awake in the middle of the night with their hands being numb, their fingers will tingle. Sometimes that tingling will go up their arms. Now, generally, it goes away when they wake up and they shake their arms, mainly because they're changing the position. When we're asleep, our hands tend to go like this, and that cuts off that carpal tunnel and pinches the little nerve that's in there. It's called the median nerve. That gives you the tingling in your fingers and sometimes up the uh, median nerve into your arm. So one way to prevent it is to sleep with splints or ACE bandages that keep your wrists at a neutral or up position instead of letting them collapse like this. Also, we see a lot of carpal tunnel syndrome in people who have gained a lot of weight because that puts pressure on the inside of that tunnel. Also, there's something about diabetes that affects that nerve. But in general, if you wake up with your fingers tingling at night, it's not your circulation. It's probably your carpal tunnel. Lots of easy ways to fix that. So don't panic, just get it checked. For additional medical minutes from Dr. Honecker, log on to bestoxnetwork.com, click on Education, and the Medical Minute tab. I was a veteran in the United States Marine Corps for four years, did two tours overseas, and I went to the VA because I had been having recurring panic attacks, and I tried to take a route through private insurance and doctors and everything, and Nobody really saw me as somebody who might potentially have issues. Like, I think I might need something like this. Since I've tried all these medications and it haven't worked, they were like, oh, this kid's just a pill popper. Long story short, it was just like a bad confluence of events. And between a bunch of stuff happening, I, you know, I was like, I need, to, I need to talk to somebody about what's going on. So that's why I came here. Specifically, I came to Germany because I wanted somebody with, who was a veteran and had that background and could identify with me on that level. I see a wide range of clients, but primarily I focus on veterans, um, active duty, military personnel, their families, friends and loved ones, basically veterans and anybody that comes into contact with them that could use a better understanding of what they're going through. And also I see a lot of chemical dependency issues also, and oftentimes those, those co-occur um, in this population. Pretty quickly, within you know, like the first 10 minutes, we were able to move right into what was bothering me and over like the span of three months, I felt like I had gotten everything out of it that I needed to. And I was, within a month, I was feeling better. You don't want it to be some long draw, drawn out thing for a year or you know, several months. It was like that. I've been in the service. I served for eight years. Um, and so how I found that that is helpful for me in my practice is that I speak the language. I'm able to communicate with them on a level. There's a lot of understanding that goes on and a lot of freedom from having to explain certain things that may not make sense to someone who hasn't been in the military. And so oftentimes that bridges a gap that can be pretty wide 
when a service member or a veteran is seeking out therapy for his or her issues. I'm really, really pleased with the, my experience at LifeWorks Group and with Jeremy Lanning. It's, it, it's been outstanding. There's a lot of people on staff that are trained to deal with this who do, who do have personal experiences with this. And I was able to feel really comfortable, really able to connect with somebody. As not just somebody who understands, but somebody who's actually been there. I'm just a lot more comfortable with how everything's going and just thinking things more positively now. Don't forget, for more information on any of the outstanding doctors you see on today's show, head to the website, bestdocsnetwork.com. Right now, time to head to our next doctor. It's Dr. Ed Singleton. The procedures that I have been doing for a number of years that involve endoscopic approach are done on what's commonly called a neuroma, which is a swollen tender nerve up in the ball of the foot. It's very, very difficult uh, to walk on at times. It's very painful. I started having foot trouble probably in 04 and went to doctors and had several diagnosed with Martin's neuroma. It's a sharp pain up in the ball of your feet. Uh, you know, it was on both of them, and at various times it, it was different in pain. Sometimes it'd subside, sometimes it'd just be where you couldn't stand it. We discussed uh, with him the traditional approaches to these procedures. After a uh, discussion with him, uh, we did decide that uh, since his conservative measures had failed, we uh, chose uh, as a team to do a endoscopic procedure. I had surgery in May. Dr. Singleton did my uh, right foot. I hadn't had a whole lot of pain in my right foot. It, I think it still needs to heal just a little bit, but it's pretty much pain free. And then we just did my left foot last Thursday. And of course, it's definitely in the healing process. And uh, I would not have had my left one done had I, my right one hadn't been successful. After his procedures, he has told me that his pain has been resolving substantially and he can start to walk and feel a whole a lot of improvement. He's, he's a good guy. He, he doesn't beat around the bush. He tells you how it is. His life has improved. His work has improved. He's not as fatigued because of the pain. And uh, I think that with a little bit more time and, and healing, he should do very, very well. As a PAMA physician, it, it's been one of my goals to provide pain freedom for various foot conditions. And, and it's been a very fulfilling part of my life. Dr. Singleton, has, he's given me the uh, pain freedom to do the things that I have normally enjoyed doing and hadn't been able to do in a while. You know, I hunt and fish a lot, which that's going to help me out there because I hadn't been able to do that either. I'm very thankful for him and his procedures and this clinic for getting me to where I'm going to be able to do that. We're all different. We like different things. But one thing nobody likes is pain especially when it keeps us from doing the things we love. Luckily, Pam is here. Whether it's back pain, carpal tunnel, foot and ankle pain or more, PAMA physicians are dedicated to their specialties and dedicated to your quality of life. Don't let pain keep you from doing the things you love. PAMA, pain freedom. I was experiencing uh, chronic neck pain, so I searched the internet and found Dr. Farhat through PAMA. I had burning, intense burning down my arms and out of my fingers. Almost felt like kind of like electricity, but also like a hot fire poker uh, constantly. When I saw her in the office initially, uh, adjusted her medications so we can help her cope with her condition. Then I did what we call a diagnostic medial nerve branch blocks, where we injected enamel medicine around the sensation nerves that carries the pain signals from her neck to her brain. The procedure helped, and as a second step in her treatment, we did the rhizotomy. He suggested a rhizotomy, uh, burning the nerves in my neck, which kind of scared me at first. We've done this procedure a few months back now, and Amy has been doing well since. It was wonderful. I have no pain whatsoever. It's completely gone. Now that I'm pain free, I am back to work. I work uh, six days a week instead of just every now and then. And I am very happy that Dr. Farhat has given me this pain freedom. 
she got so much better that she asked her husband, should I get to come and see us? He has something similar in his lower back, and we ended up by applying the same treatment built on her, on him. My wife told me about Dr. Farhat at PAMA, and uh, so I decided to come see him. And he says, you know, I'm going to make you pain free. And of course, I've heard that a lot of times, but whenever he said it, he actually means it. And he actually does, you know, come through. Since then, he has done two rhizotomies on my back, and uh, now I'm pain free. It's, it's wonderful. I'm not limited to my mobility and I've got my life back. And Dr. Farhad is always uh, very polite. Um, it's, he always comes in and greets you with a smile. Uh, his staffing is always very nice, very polite, very helpful. I don't think they are ever in a bad mood or ever have a bad day because they're always so polite. I'm very, 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 very pleased at how much he cares. If you've had a doctor help change your life, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. For additional health information, be sure to check out our Healthy Living blog for the best tips, latest medical procedures, and up-to-date news for modern medicine at our website at bestdocsnetwork.com. It sounds like such a simple problem, but in reality, it's actually a very frustrating condition to have. Millions of people have it, um, and they're not sure how to treat it. Toenail fungus or onychomycosis is an infection of the toenails by a fungus that usually lives underneath the toenail and eventually causes it to become discolored. Sometimes it thickens and you'll notice a, deb a debris underneath the nail as well. My symptoms were uh, that I was dealing with was the yellowing of the toenail. It did make me very self-conscious of wearing opal toe, trying to wear sandals. It just didn't make me feel pretty at all. Treatment options for onychomycosis vary from topical medications such as medicated toenail polishes. There are oral medications and there's nail laser treatment as well. There's different nail lasers on the market. Um, this has actually gone to our second laser. I like this laser um, a little bit better because it's a series of three treatments, which I think is a little bit better because it, it penetrates that nail on um, several different um, treatments. So it's um, treated on the first treatment, and then two weeks later you do your second treatment, six weeks later you do your third treatment. Again, by that third treatment, usually you can see a good clearing of the, of the nail bed. The process was I came in and they hooked me up on a machine and I was out within five minutes. Painless, didn't, didn't even, wasn't no needles, no anything. It was just, they just hooked you up to a machine, just put a little tape on your toes and you were done. The nail laser treatment works by using a laser that kills the fungal cells but leaves all the natural cells to the toe and toenail unharmed. It's usually performed in a series of three treatments to kill the fungal cells at the varying stages of their replication. I feel prettier and now I love wearing open-toed shoes and I just feel better about me all over just with my toes looking better. That'll do it. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Docs Network, which, of course, Candace features some of the best doctors in the entire Dallas, Fort Worth area, helping change people's lives. And for more information on any of our great doctors, you can head to the website, more videos, more information. It's bestdocsnetwork.com. It is. And if you have a question or a comment for us, we'd sure love to hear from you. Just send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. And good news, Candace, the Best Docs Network magazine, soon to be released, Check a newsstand near you. Don't miss it. Yes. Yeah, so long, everyone. We'll see you next week.